on the message tonight is glory to God, multiplication, multiplication of, of power. power. Amen. I'm excited about it. Uh, we've been talking about increasing power, and we can certainly increase power in a lot of different ways. But tonight, we're going to be talking about a specific way to increase power, and, and it's called a multiplication of power. And this is the type of increase that comes from uh, being in unity, working together. We mm. can multiply uh, power, and we'll see lots of examples in the, in the Word of God. But I want to start with just some natural examples. I call it a team effect. If you put uh, uh, two people together or three people together, then the combination is uh, the effect or the force that they have is greater than the sum of the parts. And so I call it a team effect. Hallelujah. And uh, we can look at it in the natural, start with a very natural example, and that is uh, horses. And horses, let's say you've got four horses and they all pull 3,000 pounds. And so you think, well, if we put all four of them, uh, if we put two of them together, they could uh, pull 6,000. But, mm -hmm. but uh, with this uh, team effect, they can pull 9,000 pounds. Oh, if we put four together, you think, well, they could pull 12,000 pounds. But with this uh, multiplication of power, they can pull 30,000 pounds. And those are real numbers. Those are real examples of what... Uh, kind of what happens when uh, they come together. And it's the same thing in the Bible. We see examples in the Bible. Uh, Deuteronomy 32.30 says uh, one can uh, chase a thousand mm. and two can chase 10,000. So when they come together, it's not just one and one uh, chasing a thousand, but it's uh, 10,000. Two can chase 10,000. We also see the same example in uh, Deuteronomy 26, 8, where a, a small group can defeat five uh, enemies. And when you get a larger group together, they can defeat 20 each. Each one of them can defeat 20. Well, if it's just a small group, they can only defeat five apiece. So they're in the Bible. It's in the Bible. There is a multiplication of power, power when they come together in unity. And we're going to see it. Uh, we'll start with Elijah. Uh, Elijah uh, has some examples uh, about where he multiplied things that God worked through him and multiplied when he came together. And one thing that was really important, it shows about divine connections. And mm -hmm. Elijah uh, made a couple of divine connections. God told him, go, do, go over here and do this and with this person, a specific person. And when, that, when he did that, there was this multiplication. The first one was in uh, 1 Kings chapter 17. And God told Elijah to go over to Zarephath, uh, that he had a widow over there who would sustain him. So he went over there and uh, uh, there was the widow that met him outside of the, of the town. And uh, uh, he asked her what she was doing. And she was gathering up two sticks to... Uh, make a little cake uh, for she for her son and for her and to uh, they were going to eat it and die and he said well give me a little water <laughs> and and make me a little cake first a little uh, loaf of bread first and so she went and did that that's all she had to eat just enough uh, so they could have one last meal a meager meal and and then die but because she did what the prophet said to do and that was the divine connection. This is the widow that God sent him to, a divine connection. That's a real important point for this message tonight, making divine connections. And because of that, her uh, flower never wasted. There was a multiplication in it over, over months of a, of a famine, and her oil never uh, diminished. Uh, it continued to multiply over all these months and sustained uh, not only Elijah, mm -hmm. but the widow woman and her son. And that was a multiplication. But let's go back and review. How did it happen? God made a divine connection between Hallelujah. Elijah Hallelujah. and the widow. And the widow was uh, obedient to do the prophetic word. Uh, action. There was an action required on her part. She had to bake that little cake for Elijah first, and when she did, 
then there was multiplication. Okay, now the next example I want to talk about on Elijah was in uh, 1 Kings chapter 19. He makes a divine connection uh, with a young man uh, whom God is going to have Elijah anoint, and uh, this is Elisha, uh, that he anoints him to be prophet. And uh, so they went together, and, and Elisha served Elijah for two or three years, and then at the end of Elijah's ministry on the earth, he was going to be taken up, and so he asked Elisha, what did he want? He said, I want a double portion. Well, that's a multiplication. That's a multiplication. Elijah only had one portion of his spirit, of the spirit. He only had one portion, but Elisha wanted a double portion, wanted a multiplication. Mm -hmm. So here are two people, and they came into agreement. There's, this is a divine connection. God sent Elijah to Elisha to anoint him to be prophet, and then the, Elisha followed him and served him for uh, three years, and, and then at the end of that, there was a multiplication. He wanted a double portion of the spirit that was on Elijah, and that would enable him to do twice as many miracles. And he got it. He got the double mm -hmm. portion because there was a multiplication, because there was a divine connection. But this is not the only uh, examples we see. We see it throughout the Bible. And uh, the armies of Israel were multiplied. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's look at, uh, first of all, Gideon's army. Yeah. He started with, the, there was this invasion of uh, these armies. And uh, a large number, just uh, you couldn't even count all of them. There were so many there. And uh, uh, so Gideon raised up an army of 32,000. God said, that's too many. If they do it, then they'll think they, they were, were the ones They were the ones that did it. And so he said, there's got to be some sifting here and, and sorting out and uh, sending all those that are fearful to send those home. Well, there were 22,000 people that were fearful. And so uh, Gideon sent those home, and then there was uh, 9,700 uh, people that uh, drank the water the wrong way. They, <laughs> they they got down on their knees and drank like dogs, and, and they <laughs> failed to look for the enemy. That's but, right. Uh, but there were 300, 300 that left, and they put it in their hand, and they, uh, they drank the water, and uh, because they were still alert. They were vigilant. They were looking for what was coming and, and they were not going to be surprised uh, and taking their eyes off of what was around them. And so these 300 who were vigilant, God used that as an army to uh, deliver Israel. Hallelujah. God Hallelujah. multiplied the army. God multiplied because they came in together in unity. They were not fearful and, and they were vigilant and God multiplied the army and this 300 surrounded this great multitude of an invasive, invading force. And uh, they had a, a, a jars with a, a, a lantern or, or lighting, a light, a candle, yeah, I guess. Yeah. And, and uh, they broke it and they shouted uh, uh, about the, sword of, the sword of the Lord and the sword, sword of Gideon. Gideon. And uh, then the, uh, the invading armies all just began to kill themselves because there was a multiplication of, of the power of the is of the army of israel and, and they won a great victory with 300 soldiers a multiplication because it's coming together in unity that that's really exciting uh, that we can come together in unity Amen. where god draws us together and and and, and brings us together and and our power can be multiplied. Another example of that uh, is in Jehoshaphat in uh, Second Chronicles 20. Mm. Again, a great army, all of these uh, from different nations came in to invade Judah, and uh, Jehoshaphat <laughs> called a, a fast, a, a solemn assembly, and, and uh, they uh, they prayed and sought the Lord, and, and uh, there was a prophetic voice that came forth and yes, said, you don't need yeah. to fight in this in this battle. This is, the battle is the Lord's, uh, and uh, the victory is yours. And, and so they, they uh, came together and decided the battle plan was to send out the praisers first, 
And uh, what was the song they sang, Sherry? Praise ye the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever, forever and evermore. Hallelujah. 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 And they went out and the enemy again just slaughtered themselves. God multiplied the army. He said it, the army that they sent out were praisers. And God multiplied the uh, army of uh, Judah, and they defeated a, a great invading army Amen. Uh, of many different nations. And so well, there it can be a multiplication, a multiplication of power. That's what, what we're talking about uh, here tonight. And, and I want to start with a um, practical example, a personal example, and that is... Uh, but when Sherry and I started the ministry uh, years ago, we, we started it with our children and uh, Sister Ann, one, one woman. Yes, it, we amen. We started it in our house, and uh, that was years ago. We had had other Bible studies before that and, and other times, and Judy Bowers may remember some of those times. But uh, <laughs> on one particular time, we started uh, a, a ministry effort, and Sister Ann came, and a few years later, uh, and of course, God multiplied what we were doing, but I, I want to focus on Sister Ann for a moment because there was a time uh, that her daughter was in ICU mm -hmm. uh, at, at the hospital. And I wanted to, Sherry to just give you a personal example. And this is how she, how Sherry and Sister Ann uh, fought for the life of Sister Ann's daughter, whose Hallelujah. name was Dawn. Sure. Right. She she went into ICU with pancreatitis and uh, it was uh, critical. She was in critical condition and Sister Ann and for 15 weeks uh, she was in ICU and there were um, three doctors on the case and Sister Ann and I would take her up there. Uh, she did not drive in and we would be in that ICU room. We would not leave, even though they wanted us to leave. We wouldn't leave. We told them we weren't leaving. And we stood guard over that ICU door. And even family members, if family members came, if they had any doubt and unbelief in them, they didn't get in. And we had pastors come and they didn't get in. And we had people angry at us and, and calling us all kinds of names uh, because we wouldn't let unbelievers in that room and then the doctors would come in and we would listen to the doctors and they'd say well her kidneys have shut down and they're not operating and they're not functioning and and so as soon as they left sister ann and i would come into agreement that those kidneys were functioning uh whatever the doctor said uh we came uh we we reversed that we reversed it by coming into agreement and 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 unity uh, that this is what the word says and we come into unity over the word and praise the name of Jesus. Um, she, they, they blew her up. They put her in a, um, a comatose state. Uh, then the, um, the doctors came in and said, you know, uh, we're pulling all of the tubes out and, and uh, because she's dead and uh, we're taking, you know, ourselves off the case. And but praise the name of Jesus, she didn't die. Hallelujah. She didn't die, but because we can continue to uh, bring into um, the situation the word of God, and we were in agreement on the word, and she came out of ICU, went into a regular uh, hospital room, and then she went home, and she's still alive today. Hallelujah. And I give the Lord praise Hallelujah. because of that agreement on the word of God. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No doubt, no unbelief. And so it's very important who you agree with and what they believe uh, in the name of Jesus. You know, I know that we can, there's many of you that, that we uh, can come into unity with, and uh, but one in particular is Sister uh, Sister Rebecca uh, or Sister Becky. Uh, you know we have uh, we have come into agreement over many many issues over the past thirty five years, and the Lord has has he has accomplished His perfect will by that agreement. 
And so I'm so thankful uh, that we have um, individuals in the body of Christ, a divine connection uh, that, that we can pray with and believe with and see the Lord move mightily. Okay, so just to, to review there, the three doctors that were on the case, they took themselves off of the case because she was dead. And yet uh, she lives. Yet, Amen. Yet God uh, raised her up and she lives today. Amen. Hallelujah. And she's healthy. Hallelujah. And we're thankful for that. But you see, uh, they had to keep out the doubt and unbelief from even coming in there. And uh, uh, some of the family members wanted their pastors to go in there and pray. But, right. Uh, the, uh, they Sherry, didn't get to. Jerry uh, and Sister Ann discerned that, that, uh, that they were doubters and unbelievers and they were going to have people come in and pray over her. That it needed, it needed life spoken to her and life Amen. agreement. Amen. And so uh, certainly uh, God joined Sister Ann uh, with Sherry and I uh, as he has with others. But, but I want you to see mm -hmm. that, that divine connection. Uh, see, I know a lot of people in the body of Christ, when they have problems, uh, they, they want to contact uh, some friend uh, that uh, both of them may love the Lord and they may enjoy the fellowship and friendship with each other and and uh, uh, and and they want to uh, ask for prayer and agreement and the, and they think that that's the the prayer of agreement and that's what we're going to look at for the rest of this time. I want uh, Sherry to read a couple of verses. It's what I want to say. It's much more than that. See, we just get the idea if we can get somebody. Uh, to agree. If we, we've got a problem, then we'll just uh, present our problem to somebody who has faith, and we'll come into agreement, and then we'll get uh, what the Bible says, that uh, the Father will answer our prayer. But I want you to see from the from this uh, uh, couple of verses and a couple of different translations that there's so much more to that concept about coming together and coming together in unity. I'm going to ask Sherry to read uh, uh, Matthew uh, 18 uh, verses 19 and 20 but before I do I want to say that the verse before it talks about binding and loosing and, mm -hmm. and connecting heaven and earth and we know from hallelujah uh, when the disciples asked Jesus uh, to teach them to pray he said uh, basically pray to bring heaven on earth and, and that's what mm -hmm. this is about bringing heaven on earth when we bring heaven on earth, there can be an expansion uh, of the uh, power. There can Hallelujah. be a multiplication of the power. When we have that as our goal and our perspective, uh, that we're going to be united with Jesus and, and bringing heaven mm -hmm. to earth in a situation. It's not just about having a problem and asking God to fix it. Uh, so I'll ask Sherry to read first out of the Amplified Classic. Again, I tell you, if two of you on earth agree, harmonize together, make a sympathy together. Symphony of symphony. prayer. A symphony mm, of prayer. Mm, Is your prayer, are your prayers. Oh, hallelujah. A symphony? You're harmonizing with people. Mm, mm. There's a symphony uh, uh, orchestra there that your prayers are going up to God as a uh, as musical instruments and in mm, harmony hallelujah. as a symphony of uh, uh, orchestra or is that the way your prayers are those oh, are the ones that god's going to answer here hallelujah and whatever anything and everything they may ask it will come to pass and be done for them by my father in heaven verse 20 for wherever two or three are gathered are drawn together as my followers, oh, I, I ooh, like hallelujah, that drawn together. See, we're mm. talking about divine connection. It's not just about you reaching out to a friend that has faith. It's mm. about God connecting, connecting you with people, just like Elijah was connected with the woman, the widow woman yeah. at Sarabeth. Mm. And uh, Elijah was connected with the uh, young man, Elisha. Uh, to anoint mm -hmm. him. God connected people. You, you need to be connected. And, and it's not always about praying with the same person. Mm -hmm. there, there's sometimes, who is God drawing you to? There may be a particular thing that God wants to accomplish in your life or in the life of your city or community or nation. Uh, and God wants to connect you with people uh, so that you can come into agreement. Okay, go ahead and keep reading. Okay. Um, 
are gathered, drawn together uh, in or into, into my name. There I am in the midst of them. Okay. Now we're going to read those same two verses, but we're going to read it out of a different translation. This time, I'm going to ask her to read it out of the Passion Translation. But you're going to see a lot of similarities here. Okay. Again, I give you an eternal truth. If, oh, I like that. Hallelujah. If two of you agree to ask God for something in a symphony of prayer, Ooh, hallelujah. again, hallelujah. How do, talking how, about harmony here. How, hallelujah. How do your prayers sound to God? Is it like coming from an orchestra, a symphony orchestra that's all harmonized? Is that the way your prayers sound? That's what he's asking for here. That's the kind of prayer he's looking for here. This is the kind of prayer that will multiply power. power. Okay, go ahead. My heavenly father will do it for you. For wherever two or three come together, come together in honor of my name. I love that. Oh, it's not. Hallelujah. It, it, it's not about fixing your problem. It's about in, in honor, honor of his name. Of his name. Woo! No Glory. I am right there with them. Hallelujah. I am right there with them. I, I want you to see just the richness of those two verses. I, I think we have uh, so many times overlooked what God's really saying in those two verses. Mm -hmm. He's wanting to bring heaven on earth, and, and he wants it to wants us to do it by coming together in unity and, and, and that's what as an orchestra and like an orchestra that we're harmonizing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now the voice uh, translation really brings out a an important point here it says the voice what, the voice mm -hmm. translation says what you discern then the father blesses what you have discerned that he blesses the discernment See, that's not your problem. See, you discern it. it. It's by the Spirit of God. You discern it, and then the Father blesses what has been discerned by the Spirit. Mm. And so the unity oh, wow. here is not over fixing your problem. See, mm. God uh, ha has a bigger uh, view and a different perspective than just simply fixing our problems. And so many times, uh, people uh, contact us and just uh, say, well, I've got this problem. Can you pray? Mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. uh, well, we want to be uh, honored to honor those people, honor those friends and be merciful to them. And, uh, but that's not the answer to this prayer. That's not what this prayer is about. Verses uh, 19 and 20 mm -hmm. of chapter 18 of Matthew no, it's not just about somebody having a problem and then they just passing it along to somebody with faith and asking them uh, to fix it because God wants to use us. And, and what does he want to use us for? Well, we need to discern. What is it that mm -hmm. God wants to do mm -hmm. in our lives? We need to discern because the blessing is going to come on the discernment. And so what we've got to do here is to be united with Jesus. It's not about two people coming together and asking God to fix their problem and so all the problems are going to be fixed. No, it's about mm -hmm. us coming in unity with Jesus Christ on what is his perspective. When the living word rises up and we're in agreement with the living word, that's when the father's going to operate on that. He's going to bless that. It's a blessing, the living word rising up uh, within us because we have come into agreement uh, with Jesus Christ because if we abide in him and he abides in us and his living word abides in us and it comes alive and it rises up, that's where the father can bless that Amen. and our prayers will be answered because that's the type of agreement we're coming into uh, not an agreement about asking God to fix our problem. It's about what is, what are we discerning by the spirit mm. and who mm. is God mm. connecting us to yeah. so that we can offer up prayers that are in harmony, harmony and honor him and honor his name Amen. glorify the father. Everything we do 
should glorify the Father. And our prayer should be like a symphony orchestra, like the music. Mm, going of, up to the Lord. Of, Amen. Of a symphony orchestra going up to the Father. Is that the way your prayers sound? Is that the way your prayers sound to him? That's the one that he's going to bless. Yeah. When you discern by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll ask Sherry. Well, That's I have, I have, um, it's a warning for all of us. And I see this all the time. I see people put their prayer request on Facebook for everyone to see. And that is a very dangerous thing to do uh, because number one, you are not, you're not connecting like brother Fred said, you're not truly connecting to those individuals can that can come into harmony with you. You don't know how they're gonna pray. You don't know if they're gonna pray if it's God's will or not. You know, and this is something that, that I just uh, put out there to you that I know Facebook is a very powerful vehicle, uh, but it also can be a very dangerous uh, vehicle uh, in, the, in the spiritual realm. So I just lay that before you. The people can be um, deceived. It, this is not about numbers. This is right. about how many people you can drum up yeah. and generate up that you will get on a prayer chain that will agree with you because see the a chain is the weakest link in the chain Amen. is the weakest link of the whole chain Amen. and that'll cause the whole chain to break if mm -hmm. it there has one single weak link in it and that's the same for a prayer chain. Well, <laughs> How much, how many weak links are in a prayer chain? Mm. This is talking about two or three people. Yeah. Whom, whom God connects together and they, they pray prayers that they have discerned uh, by the spirit mm. of God and wanting God to bless what they have discerned. And they're offering up prayers, but their prayers are in harmony and as a, a sound of a symphony yes, orchestra. Amen, amen, amen. That's what this, yeah, these verses good, are talking good, about. This is a way to multiply power. Just sending out uh, your prayer or your problems uh, mm -hmm. on social media mm -hmm. that uh, Sherry's talking about or getting on a phone and, and uh, telling a bunch of people your problems doesn't mean that they're going to be effective and that there's going to be multiplication of power. What I what I believe the Holy Spirit is leading us tonight is to really understand how to multiply power. And it's available for every one of us. Every one mm -hmm. of us can uh, have a multiplication of power. So we have so much power, but let God direct you to other people who will come in harmony with you, Amen. Who, who will be like offering up music of a, a symphony orchestra that will offer up the mm -hmm. prayers in that way that will impact God and bring heaven on earth. Hallelujah. It's possible. Hallelujah. We can all do it. And if any of us uh, think that we can just... Uh, uh, call out uh, our problems to people and, and get a, lo a lot of numbers, a large number of people praying about our problems. That's not this passage here in Matthew 18. And so I want to encourage all of you to be serious about- mm -hmm. Be cautious. A, yeah. About prayers, how to pray, who to pray with. Find out who God is connecting you to. Don't just sit in your bedroom and think that you're going to offer up prayers and you're going to contact a few people and, and that will be effective prayer and you'll have a lot of power. Uh, no, you need to find out and make mm -hmm. connections mm -hmm. uh, that are God-ordained connections. Amen. Elijah sent I mean, God sent Elijah to a widow woman in Zarephath. Uh, what did she have? She had two sticks. She had a little flower and she had a, a, little, a little oil. oil and she was about to die. 
And, and so it's not about, oh, I'm going to look for the person with the most faith. If I can just find one person with the most faith, I'll always connect with that person. No, you have to be led by the Spirit of God. Who is God sending you to? And how can you discern what God is wanting to do in that situation? And then how do you offer up these prayers that are in harmony that the Father will bless what you have discerned? Hallelujah. Thank you Hallelujah. for being here today. Hallelujah. I'm going to turn it over to you. Hallelujah. You know, uh, Brother Wayne um, uh, Tinch uh, put up on, um, on the on the chat, some of you may have already seen it, but that, you know, as far as the, you know, just contacting, you know, everyone and anyone uh, about your prayer needs uh, can also open you up to uh, witchcraft and, and other um, unclean uh, spirits, uh, people that will uh, try to connect with you that uh, are not what the Lord wants for you. And so just, you know, just be, uh, let that discernment come forth as you um, bring forth your needs to other people uh, and, and pray with other people. Uh, even uh, prayer groups and prayer teams, uh, you know, we, we have to know that we know uh, that we are, uh, praying with individuals that God has joined us to, uh, not just, not just anyone and everyone. Uh, it's, if we want the multiplication of power, if we want, um, uh, that heaven, heaven to come to earth, then we, we need to, uh, to be alert. We need to be sober. Uh, we need to watch and pray like the Gideon army, uh, so that we can get the, the job done, uh, that the Lord, uh, wants to accomplish. 